happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you're fine, want to have a good time, then like, comment, and subscribe. Mother Nature. She's cruel. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Miss Tasha. It's back at it, you know the video, you know what I'm saying. I'm getting ready for a photo shoot, but that's not the topic, and that's not the point of this video. I am actually going to go into detail about how modeling has changed since I first started 15 years ago to now, specifically how to get started. So if you wanna know and watch me transform from a catfish into, you know, what I usually do, then keep on watching. My face is moisturized already, but you guys, boy has the times changed. And I say that because I've been in the industry for 15 years. And yes, I'm saying 15 because I literally went through the woodwork since I was about nine to 10 years old. I'm 24 now and I legitimately did everything in the book back then that you had to do in order to quote unquote, be successful in the modeling world. Now I need to try to get some primer and actually be a decent makeup artist. But um, yeah, so when I was about nine or 10 years old, I was very shy. I was suffering a lot from social anxiety. Uh, I had a speech impediment growing up, so it was kind of hard for me to talk in front of crowds. And when I did, I kind of just freak out and never was able to finish what I started. So. My parents thought it was a good idea to put me in acting and modeling school because I showed interest in it at such a young age, taking pictures, and my mom always wanted to be a model, but you know, times was different back then for young black girls, so it was my chance and her chance to also live the dream that I never thought I needed until at that age. When I first started, I literally went to classes. I studied at John Robert Powers. Um, I'm not even sure if there's still any around, but I remember where I was growing up, it was like the big three acting schools. It was John Casablanca's, John Robert Powers, and Barbizon. I do think Barbizon is still around. I'm not sure, but my older sister used to take classes at John Casablanca's, but she didn't really show much more interest in modeling, um, so she stopped going. And I went to John Robert Powers here in my home state of Maryland, and that's where I did all my acting, modeling, monologue, commercial, cold read, anything that you can think of, runway training, I learned all of the bases at that school and classes were very expensive do i know how expensive they was at the time no i was just lucky and blessed enough to have parents that were willing to sacrifice so much just so that their little girl could gain a little bit of confidence you know so um at the time the best way to get seen by agents were through modeling like conventions and that's where we had to audition for. Through my, my school, they had opportunities to audition for this thing called IPOP, and it stands for International Presentation of Performance. And if you get past the school's audition, basically what they did is they train you now for the convention. And it was a whole separate training than going to school. So all this costs money, you guys. Like this wasn't like things that, oh, you won a contest and you don't have to pay for nothing. Like I wish everything in that industry or in this industry specifically costs money and it's just gotten worse throughout the years i'm gonna get to that but i auditioned the first time at like around nine no i think it was 10 and i didn't get picked the first so far time. my face looks horrendous and i'm so glad you guys can't really see it much but anyways so the second time audition for ipod i did get in and i was about to turn 11 i think when i finally got accepted disrespectful when i finally got accepted into ipop so then we trained for months and i went in 2010 so that means yes i was 11 about to turn 12 
So I was so excited to go and basically what you did was that you compete in all these different competitions. You had a contestant number. It's kind of like a pageant, but not really. And you have these things prepared, like you have your monologue prepared and your code read commercial and your screen write or whatever. Then you have like a runway competition. You have to submit pictures, comp cards, a portfolio. And you have to have all these things ready. So I had to get my portfolio, my first ever like professional photo shoot done was with them. First hair and makeup was with them. And I was like, you know, 10 and 11. So I never experienced these things before. And I was like super excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm getting my makeup done like a real model. Like it was a really special moment when you're younger. And I wish I could go back to those days to like reliving like the excitement I had at that moment when I was like getting my hair and makeup done by professionals again like my photography and pictures taken by professionals it was an awesome moment so when I got everything prepared and I actually went down to iPop was in Las Vegas I was so excited that I received a couple of callbacks after the whole weekend was over and I signed to my first agency so I received a call back from the Crawford agency out of LA and I was super excited and um, I literally did not know what to do with myself in my head. I'm like, I'm gonna be famous, I'm gonna be on TV, all this, all the good old things. And it didn't necessarily turn out like that. So I received a year contract with them and it was looking up because I was actually doing like cold reads for Disney and I was like excited because I'm like, oh, if I get one of these roles, I could possibly go on Disney. And it was actually kind of cool looking back on it, like the roles I didn't get that I read for and actually seeing the characters that they casted. And like, okay, I understand why they casted them, but like I wasn't bitter about it. Not that I was a child, so I really didn't understand like the likelihood of me getting casted anyways and what that would possibly do. But then I realized that my parents as much as they wanted me to succeed, they also did not want me to miss out on my childhood. So when they found out that most of the time I would have to go to LA and spend a lot of time there and miss school, my mama decided it wasn't the best idea to continue that venture at that age. I was bummed out because I'm like, well, why did I'm about to get so excited if y'all not going to let me do it, right? When I look back on it, I'm grateful that they didn't let me do it because my life probably would turn out really different and I wouldn't probably have any of the experiences I've had as an adult. And I've heard too many horror stories about like childhood Disney actors and how what they've been through and how they wish they like had a like a normal life. So in the, in the time... I was like upset that my parents would let me go through all that but I, I did still learn a lot so that was a bust and I kept going to classes I, my school ended up shutting down so that's when I got more into pageants and during the pageants I actually ended up getting in contact with another John Robert High School out in Philadelphia and they definitely had a huge rapport about them like they're supposed to be like one of the best ones on the rest branches like and it actually was certified under the educational program to be a school and they recruited me to go to another acting and modeling convention this time in new york city called imta which is the international modeling and talent association i think i think that's what it stands for if not pretty sure they're still around you can look them up so I ended up taking preparation classes with them, making that three hour drive to Philly every few weeks to make sure I was prepared to go to New York. And this time I was determined, like determined. So yeah. I didn't say it's literally like the same exact thing. Only this time I was 13 going to IMTA. And I was 13 and I did the exact same thing that I did at IPOP. And I was like, okay, I got to get something this time. Get everything. Signed with this company out of New Jersey, I think, called Divine Management. Again, a bust. So I experienced 
difficult challenges at that time. And at that time I was getting older. So I was 13 and I was at like a five, four by five height. And I also wasn't old enough to do a lot. A lot of the companies didn't want anybody under 16. So that was one of my problems. Like I was at an awkward age where they didn't really know what to do with me. And I also wasn't like fully growing. So yeah, it was a, another bust for me. So I spent, while I was doing pageants, spent the rest of the time researching my own agencies, trying to like find out other things going on and on my own in the area or in New York. I remember I had got my very first fashion show off of this casting website where you can sign up and you pay money every month and they'll send you castings, right? Those are very popular, especially now. Then I was on this casting thing called Explore Talent. Again, I don't know if they're still around. After a while, I stopped using them. I only really got one thing from them and that was my very first fashion show that I got when I was 12. I got my very first fashion show from them. Other than that, nothing else. But that was a great experience, me getting my very first fashion show. Like, I was super excited for that. <laughs> like, not gonna lie, very, very excited to walk in my very first ever professional fashion show. So yeah, I usually just stuck during with the pageants and hopefully those pageants was gonna open doors for me so the first time I got my first paid gig is actually through a pageant and I went to East Coast USA pageant and I won the supermodel title I actually got paid to model during the NFL live lounge party in New York City and honestly it was pretty awesome experience plus getting my very first paycheck and it, East Coast is also how I met the people that I received my very first magazine cover from, which was Chick NYC. So I met them as a title holder at East Coast and I was buying their clothes and posting pictures in them and I did just one fire photo shoot with one of my photographer friends I went to high school with. They saw the picture and it was like, hey, we want you to be our next cover model. And I was like super excited. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, like, yes, yes, yes. Like a thousand times. Yes. So I honestly don't remember what age that was. I think maybe I was it was 2018. I think I was 19 or 20. I think it had to be 2018. And I ended up walking for their fashion show in 2019. So I think it was 2018, but that was my very first magazine cover. And I was like, oh my gosh, my career is really picking up. I was like, hopefully, cause I'm getting older now. Like I'm in college and I really need some help here. And like I've had moments in there, my career where I really thought I was going someplace, but I ended up not going those places. <laughs> On my own, I was able to find like Facebook groups that were modeling based and those Facebook groups actually helped me connect to a lot of face like opportunities. I think I found out about Atlantic City Fashion Week through a Facebook group and I started walking for them in 2017 and I was walking for them all the way up to like 2021, I believe. And then I started walking because I wanted to do other things and I found my way through London Fashion Week through a Facebook group. I had signed with this, um, international modeling company but other than booking london fashion week i honestly didn't book anything else through them and i had to pay my way to london fashion week so that wasn't that was an amazing opportunity because i don't think i would ever went to london and walk through london fashion week if i did not get to that opportunity but it's like moments in there where you feel like you're really going someplace and then you're like put back to square one like, it's not like America's Next Top Model days when, oh my gosh, you got discovered in a mall and that next you know you get an international line contract at 15. It's not like that. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. I mean, it could have been probably that easy for other people that had the height to grab people's attention. But unfortunately, I didn't at this point. I reached my peak height, which is 5'7". <laughs> but I loved runway. So I wasn't going to give up. 
And since then, I've just been doing everything on my own. I haven't signed with an agency, a legitimate agency. Like, I've tried other agencies here and there, but they're money hungry and all they want is contestants, not contestants, but clients money. And they don't really sit there and actually market them to people. So once I figured out that I wasn't going to find a legitimate agency that's not going to do that, at least for myself and me being at 5'7", I was like, I have to do these on my own. So I just made sure everybody that I met and kept in contact with through these fashion shows, photo shoots, magazine publications that I got, that I was going to keep networking with them and hopefully they was going to help me get to where I needed to be in my career. I'm still not signed with one. And like back then, people thought that, you know, it's going to be so easy and simple. You take classes, you go to an acting and modeling school, they're supposed to open the doors for you to make it into the industry. And at the end of the day, you're still fending for yourself. They can present the moment in front of you, but this is a cutthroat industry. If you don't have what it takes, they are so nitpicky and they will literally like run you to the ground. So I've had those opportunities in front of me and I just unfortunately never pick got picked up by the right people. I even tried out another modeling convention in Chicago called Launch when I was like 21, I think. I think I was 21. I don't I don't know, but and I really thought I was gonna get something out of there because I got a call back from Wilhelmina, I got a call back from MMG, and Wilhelmina never contacted me again. <laughs> And MMG said I wasn't marketable, which kind of like tore me down a little bit. And I realized that if I really wanted to get to where I need to be without having to change myself, I would have to just do this on my own because unless I find an agency that really cares about their clients and getting them out there and that really sees me for me, then there's no point in keep trying to sign these agencies that's not going to do anything for me. Now that I own my own modeling agency, there's many ways to get ahead now that is not that wasn't relevant 15 years ago when I started social media is a big thing now and a lot of these people are getting their start with brands fast fashion brands if that's what you're into then go after that and a lot of people are, are just you creating content after content on social media to get their face and name out there and if you can master that you're going to do pretty well with marketing yourself as a model. But for me, I do still do a lot of things. Like, I love fashion shows. And I do meet a lot of people in the fashion shows. And that can get you a lot of connects. Researching the shows. And mostly every major city now has a show. You in Baltimore, they got Baltimore Fashion Week. New York Fashion Week. They got Carolina Fashion Week. They got Kentucky all types of stuff going on now and these fashion shows are bigger and better and you know there are great ways to meet people i do say that you have to be careful because a lot of times people are charging a whole lot of money to walk in the show people are charging a whole lot of money to be in these fashion shows now and they're just money hungry a lot of these companies are just money hungry and they're not going to do anything for you you really have to pay attention to those who are actually doing something in the industry still, despite it being so oversaturated right now. In order to stand out, you have to be doing something different and you have to constantly, constantly be putting your name out. Jobs are not just gonna come to your email no more. You really have to take the initiative and put yourself out there. That's the only way. The only way is you're going to make it in the industry now, you have to be consistent. And even now I've been in it for so long, I find it hard to adjust to the changes because I mean, you go from thinking that you had to go to school, take classes. A lot of people are not even taking classes now. They might go to a couple runway courses in person and then next you know it, boom, they're fully trained or they depict themselves as fully trained and that's okay. Like things are not as brutal as it was when I was growing up. With that being said, there's also a consequence of that. Because things are not as brutal and cutthroat, there's more diversity and there's more inclusivity, like that means it's going to be very much oversaturated. And you might not pay to be in a fashion show, but there's others that will. 
and they're going to do whatever they can if they got the money they're going to do whatever they can to make it far so you have to realize are you willing to compete with the industry with that's full of money or are you still going to go after those opportunities that only that select three percent can go like even though it's still very much competitive in the places where it's still very constructive and the fashion industry has becoming less and less tight knit and constructive but there are still ways and to make it into those very inclusive or not inclusive exclusive events and i'm all about inclusivity like that's what my whole brand and my whole just being is about but now it's so much harder to make it big you can make it in it but making it big and actually getting the money and the income for it because Unfortunately, a lot of people aren't getting paid anymore because there's models out there that are willing to do stuff for free just for the accolades or, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Experience is fine. Trading for pictures is fine. Building a portfolio, having fun is fine. Oh my gosh, having fun is fine. And then, but there's like, there are two different types of people in the world. People are here to have fun, make it a hobby. And there's people that are still trying to make it a career. And those are the big, two biggest things. And that's how you know what direction you're going to change? Are you going to take that? Okay, I give up on making money off it. I was going to do this for fun. Or am I going to do this? I want to make money. I want this to be my main income. Then this is just, you're going to have to go and you're going to have to fight against the big dogs in order to do that. And that's pretty much how the cookie crumbles. I haven't put eyelashes on in so long. I almost forgot how to put them on. But yeah, so I say all that to say that the industry has changed and it will continue to change and you have to continue to defy the odds and be different and stand out and honestly there's no correct way to do that you just have to do it and learn from your mistakes your trials your tribulations and if this is really important to you you can't give up trust me i've tried giving up so many times and i just you know can't stay away from it if you guys want an in-detail episode of what tips to get started now, and if you guys like these episodes, let me know. And I'm, again, disrespectful. And I will keep doing these to help other people get started in the industry because why not share all these years of struggle with you all to help you out a little bit. Well, that is it for today's video. If you guys really enjoyed listening to my perspective on the industry and why does my eyelash look wonky? I'll fix it later. And, you know, getting insight if, if you're an aspiring model, if you're just interested in the model industry as a whole, or you're inspired now. And if you want me to do more episodes of this, then just let me know. Comment down below. Or if you have me on Instagram or social media, send me a comment or a message and be like, hey, can you do a video on this? And I will. But other than that, thank you guys for enjoying this video. If you like me, if you like my content, if you want to see more of me, if you want to see more of my content, then please like, comment, subscribe, hit that post notification bell so you get notified every single time i post okay okay i love you all and i'll see you later peace out home slice bye